Hey guys, and this week I'm gonna be teaching you how to create this really awesome looking abstract material here that you can add to your own renders and compositions. It's fully procedural and super easy. As you can see, it's only really a handful of notes. Now, as usual with these material tutorials, I'm gonna be using a template file that you can get in the link in the description on my Gumroad, as well as all the project files so you can follow along without any trouble. Or if you want, you can just take them and run. Anyway, let's get started. Okay, so I'm going to open up a new template file here. Add in a new material here. You can name it whatever you want. I'm just going to call mine abstract. And really quickly, before we, uh, before we get started with the node layout, come down to the settings and change from displacement bump only to displacement and bump. And make sure if you're not using the template file, make sure you have a modify stack similar to this. So in our shader tab here, what we're gonna quickly do is add in another principal BSDF so we can duplicate that. And then a mix shader. Oh, not a mix RGB, I do that all the time. Then a mix shader, and this will be mixing uh, our two principal BSDF nodes. And into the factor of this mix shader, it's gonna be controlled by a math node. And this math node is can be set to add, so that's fine. And so, what is going to be uh, what's going to be our two inputs for our math node? Well, we need two color ramps because these two color ramps will be controlling two Voronoi textures. And this is pretty much the heart of the the main effect here. These two Voronois. So let's set up the first one before we uh, worry about the second. This first one, we're going to be using the distance value here. So you can connect that up and I'm going to set it to from F1 to distance to edge like so that'll get rid of the other values and the uh, the input of the vector here will be a noise texture and I'll show you what this does if we have a look at our Voronoi and we connect up a noise texture to the vector we can see that it makes things a little bit wobbly and uh, I guess noisy add some randomness and it gives a really cool looking effect but um, in order to use this properly I'm going to down the scale to something like 4 and change the color ramp. So I'm going to invert the color ramp, invert it and clamp it. And now if we have a look at the color ramp output, as you can see, we get these sort of uh, these streaks coming through. So before it looked like this, we're going to invert that and we get the streaks. Now these streaks are going to be big, so um, don't go too heavy on the clamping because uh, these are going to be our like big veins, I guess. Now into the noise texture. With this uh, this particular noise texture, I'm gonna change the detail to something like 5.6, I don't know, it doesn't really matter as long as it's a bit noisy. And then the roughness, that can stay the same. I am, however, gonna bring the scale down to something like two, right? And we can get these sort of uh, bigger patches here. However, I don't really like um, the generation of this. So I'm gonna play with the scale a little bit. And well, I'm not liking how it's all up here. I kind of want it to be in this little corner. So I'm gonna add in a mapping node into the vector here. And then the input of this mapping node can be a uh, texture coordinate. I'm gonna set that to generated. Add a location on the, of the Y and the X. That's what I'm gonna be changing here. I'm gonna bring the X value across till I get a, a an outcome I like, and I'm going to bring the Y value, and we can also touch the Z, like so, until I get a value that I like. I kind of like this look. Um, I think that's a good balance between black and white here. Now, our next step is, I'm going to move these aside. Next step here is connecting up our second Voronoi texture. So I'm going to connect the color of this noise texture to the vector of our Voronoi here. And if we have a look at the output of this color ramp and connect up the distance really quick, set this to from F1 to distance to edge, we can see that, um, well, things are uh, things are a bit different. That's because our color ramp here and our scale. So before we play with our color ramp, I'm gonna set the scale, I'm gonna increase it because these are gonna be our small veins. So something like 13, I think, would be pretty good. That's awesome. And now I can bring the color ramp down like so. So we're gonna invert it and clamp it like we did to the other one. Except 
Uh, instead of um, having this black side uh, closer to the right, I'm going to push it closer to the left. And this will make these veins thinner. Like that. That's perfect. Now what we want to do is combine these two. So that's what our, our math node here is for. If we have the input, let's have a look at the output here. If we have the, uh, for the two inputs, we have our color one and our color two. We can see that combines them perfectly. So now what we want this to uh, control is our displacement. So I'm going to add in a displacement node. And this displacement node will have a height input of our math node here. And we can plug the displace into displace. And I'm going to plug our mix shader here into our surface. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is just change my scale here of my displacement. Because one is a bit too big. If we were to go into rendered mode, as you can see, it's going to be very spiky. So I'm going to change my scale to something like 0 0.005. I think that should be okay. We'll see. If we, if we need to come back to that, uh, we can. Right, so that is the main effect here. Obviously, it's a bit hard to see. So we need to have some material changes between the two veins. So if we change this material to a, a black, the other one to a white, we can see we're getting all the veins to become black and everything else be white. So I'm going to change my vein color to uh, like an orange. Like that. And then I'm going to change uh, the base color here to just a yellow, a uh, light yellow will be all good for me. Now, I am going to tweak this a little bit and bring our white slider here just a bit closer to the black so that it isn't so blurry. Now, secondly, I am going to tweak this uh, second color amp here a little bit and just make them a little bit fatter. There we go. That's all right. Finally here, we can change our principal BSDF nodes to something that looks a bit more... I'm going to say glossy. For this base color one, I'm going to up the specularity and down the roughness. So next up, we're going to add some bump to this principal BSDF node here, our base color. So first of all, I'm using a Voronoi texture and a Musgrave to drive the bump. So I'm going to add those in. This uh, The height connected to the vector and this Voronoi texture set to smooth F1. Oh, sorry, distance to edge. Uh, next, I'm going to add in a color ramp here and the distance into the factor. We're going to have a look at the output of this. I'm going to set the scale to 200. Actually, that's a bit much. I think 100 is a uh, 100 would be fine. And just clamp the white value. That's looking nice. Uh, finally, we need a bump node. So add that in and connect the color to the height and the normal to the normal. So we can have a look at how this looks now. And that's looking kind of cool, except our strength is a bit strong. So I'm going to bring that down, maybe all the way down to like 0.2. And that's looking really nice. Uh, finally, with our second principal BSDF node here, I'm going to crank up the specularity to 1, bring the roughness down to like 0.1, maybe a little bit more, to like 0.2. And then... For this little uh, darkness effect, I'm going to bring the transmission up. This will just make this uh, texture here a little bit deeper and richer in color. And that's it. We've made this really cool veiny material. I am going to just change the saturation here of this yellow, but we can render that out. And there you have it. In my opinion, it's a really cool looking material. I slapped a bit of post-processing on it just to give it a final touch. I suggest you do that as well. If you enjoyed this video, let me know down below or consider subscribing. If you make anything, tag me on Instagram. I'd love to see it. Thanks and see you next time.